Welcome back to another installment, Trader Dev. Um, it's been a minute. I don't know exactly what all new features have been added since uh, we were last here. Um, but let's start with let's start with something that has changed. Um, I'm just trying to think. What have I what have I changed mechanics wise? I don't know of anything. Oh, here's something. Let's go check out the new signs. So, there have been some updates to some signs. Uh, specifically, there is now a bronze wall sign and the steel and wooden wall sign. Oh, there's also a hanging arrow sign. Um, the signs, I'll just put this one here now have a title and a body so we can put a title and we'll just say it goes here this is the body of the sign and then save and then we can also preview uh, which does what we would expect to do and previews the sign for us uh, but the hover text still shows in the upper left of the title uh, so same thing here it just says built by I can preview this and it it just shows this uh, now if I wasn't the person who had placed the sign when I right clicked on it I would just immediately see this um, which on a sign like this admittedly where all I need is the uh, the hover text it's it's kind of useless but the reason I implemented it as such was for in the academy here, or whatever we want to call this. Apologies that I don't have fast right now for some reason. Oh, actually, you know, I probably just turned it off. <laughs> That's why. All right, ignore the plants. Ignore the plants. We will get to those shortly. So I put a like a academy school type thing here. Um, we have a chalkboard. So we have some information for both builders and players about how to use tasks, how to set them up, etc., etc. The next room we have tasks that are time-based. So these ones you don't need items for. We've got this apple crate. You just got to find the rotten apple in it, which is uh, pretty simple. I got to do a lot of UI overhauls. Uh, we have this magnifying, or not magnifying glass, microscope. Um, this is actually kind of fun. You just select what this picture is of, and save it, and whoops, this is snow. Um, looks like a chunk of salmon, but I don't think it's a chunk of salmon. Do I have like, oh, tree rings? That might be tree rings. Uh, I think I was right. Uh, I have no idea what this is. Wait a minute, it's not supposed to pull up something different each time. It's supposed to keep showing the same thing. That is, uh, that is not good. <laughs> Whoops, that's got to get changed. But anyway, so I have some stuff here. And then, uh, in this room. Oh, actually, no, I never put the signs in. I built the signs so that I could do this. And then I proceeded to never do it. So basically what I wanted to do. You know, we can use a bronze wall sign. Was just to put a wall sign above the task, and then we'll just put in the title microscope task. And then we'll just say, uh, say something about the task here. And that way, people coming to learn about the different tasks and how they work could see more information. So, specifically for the uh, microscope here as far as configuring goes uh, you have time you have the XP that's granted you have your info text the microscope will collect up to 20 specimens so here it says there's 18 specimens waiting to be identified it'll go up to 20 and then it'll stop every time you identify whether correct or incorrect uh, you will decrease the a number of specimens waiting to be identified and then it'll slowly build its way back up to 20. Um, and that was just so you wouldn't have 
a microscope that somehow had hundreds and hundreds of available tasks. Now it is done with no timers. If there's nobody in the area, the no timer doesn't fire, so they won't accrue. But uh, yeah, the apple crate. This is a fun, easy one. It's just uh, it's always the same picture of an apple, just someplace in there. I might try doing more things like that because that was uh, that was a pretty fun little fun little task to do. Okay, so we have the the uh, addition of some new. Um, Topiaries, I believe, or what these things are called if you search for them. Um, yep, topiary bushes. So, do I have, I do not have all these styles of them out here. So there are, oh wait, yeah, I do. I'm just blind as a bat. So we got one that's like the three little, three little bush things on the trunk. We got one that's a little fancy with a couple trunks. And little bush things, and then we got one down here that looks uh, more like a small evergreen or arborvitae. That's just uh, you know all the plant with one trunk in the middle. Um, those I actually I created specifically just for this walkway here because I needed something to kind of break up the monotony of it. Um, so that that helps a, a little bit, a little bit. Uh, while we're talking about new things that have been added, I suppose. Let's talk about some of the new artwork. So we got a couple chicken pictures here. About the boom, about the bing. Um, yeah, they're just called chicken. Why would anybody want a picture of a chicken? I don't know. But you know, I took pictures of them. So, <laughs> so why wouldn't I throw them in? The same reason you'd want a goofy tractor. Um, I think that was it for any new artwork. Yeah, nothing too impressive there. Oh, we should check out the new clothing. Uh, is it faster? Yeah, it's probably faster just to go this way. I think there's a new hairstyle as well, actually. I'll have to double check that. Look both ways before crossing the street. Not that there's any cars yet, but you know, should always check before crossing the street. Somebody was asking for some more clothing. I don't remember who, but I got some more added. Your wishes have been granted. Um, not shirts. I think actually I just added a new pair of pants. We got some track pants. I just wasted 10 XP on track pants. What an idiot. Good thing I have like, oh, I only have 84 XP. Whoops. I had more than that. Let me take off my khaki shorts. Let me throw my track pants. Yeah. Yeah, I'm ready to run now. Except I hit door. Yeah. Uh, I'll probably add a couple more variations to those, actually, because that's, uh, that's a pretty simple one. Uh... Was that it? I think that was it, actually. I think that's the only thing I added was the track pants. Um, but there should be a new hairstyle available. So, uh, how do we do this here? I wish the model didn't always uh, reset itself, but it does. It's uh, admittedly a very poor quality. But uh, we got, like, some... I don't, I don't know if these would be considered pigtails. They're supposed to be braids, but, uh, you know, with... Four pixels, three pixels. You can't really, <laughs> you can't really show that it's a braid too easily with so few pixels. Um, but yeah, that's what it's supposed to be. Anyway, so we got a new hairstyle. If if and you were looking for that, um, these have been changed. I think since the last update video, I'm not positive. Uh, they're now available to use for everybody. But crew members, when you're playing a lever level with uh, with an actual team of people, so if you're playing solo, you can still use them. Um, this is just if you are a crew member, you can't use it. Um, but the ghost can, trader can, solo players can, builders can. Yeah, you just bada boom, bada bing, transports you back and forth, nice and easy like so. Um, where's my, here's my new, my latest and greatest invention. So we have, let me just go here, and let me just search for the platformer. Okay, so we have the, uh, the moving platforms here, right? Let's go ahead and place one here. Hopefully that was low enough so it'll work, yep. So we've got the moving platform that goes back and forth, right? And that's great for when you want to go back and forth. Uh, there's also supposed to be one that goes up and down, which uh, 
I don't know whatever happened to that one. Interesting. Well, we also have a spring now. Quite neat, I must say. Um, it's supposed to be possible. And by supposed to be, I mean it is. There we go. You've just got to time your walking with when it shoots you up to get up onto the roof here. So, how does it work? Well, you punch it to to load it, prime it, whatever you want to call it, to make it go into the loaded state. And then one second later, it, uh, it'll shoot you in the air. You have to be standing on top of it, as you can see here. Um, or anybody else can be standing on top of it. It doesn't matter. It'll just check who's on top of it and shoot them up in the air. Can be configured with the configurator wrench, of course. So, um, as it says here, set the springiness here. A player will be boosted in the spring releases one second after punching the node. Directions are world-based, not coordinate. Or not, uh, they don't correlate with the direction it's placing or the direction the player is placing. So, for example, I can be looking away from and it'll still shoot me towards the building the uh the way that works is you have x y and z your y is your altitude so if i set this to 25 and i'll set this to zero and then we submit hopefully i don't die doing this it'll shoot me really high in the air and when i land i do take quite a bit of damage um so just be aware of that 7 is the lowest you can go. 6.5 is uh, pretty much the... Well, 6.5 is the height of a player jump. So setting it to 7, you're basically just jumping as high as you could jump already. But you could be setting this to 10. Whoops. Well, actually, I could set it to 19 because it'll automatically change it to 10. I don't know which way. Okay, that's going to shoot me forwards. So you can get a little bit extra of a jump by running when it when, when yes by running when it shoots you it just gives you a little bit of a velocity boost um but anyways as far as telling which direction it is so we're going uh z10 right now so if we look up at the the debug information here we can see that z positive is going north so if we wanted it to go south, we would need to go Z negative. So we'll just set that to negative 10. And now when we punch it, it throws us negative. You can do positive and negative on your X and Z. So, you know, north, south, east, and west. On Y, you can't go negative because that would be pushing you into the node itself, which would potentially cause damage. I don't know. I never tried it. But it wouldn't do anything because obviously the node's right there and you can't go into it. So it only goes up. Also, as you have uh, probably heard, there's a quite satisfying little springing sound. Verenaz, verenaz. I found that off open game art. I didn't create it myself. I don't have a cool spring like that to use. Um, Let me see. I'm trying to think. Was there anything else? Oh! Only the biggest feature that's been requested for over a year. Oh, wait. It's not a task. Um, um, I guess I just have to go to all, and I think I can just search sabotage. We are sabotage. I don't believe this was available in the previous level, or previous update video. I'm just going to throw it right here. Okay. So we configure it as a builder using the configuration switch. There's a lot of text. Uh, you should read it. I'm just going to throw in some super good alert text. Uh, we're going to make this end of the match. There's not a match, so it actually won't work. But uh, if you check end match, when the timer runs out or the sabotage node is restored to non-sabotage state, the match will finish. And if the timer ran out, the uh, trader wins, and if the node is restored to its non sabotage state, the crew wins. Um, but you have the chance of sabotage 
being sabotaged and being repaired, being successful. It's all explained in the text here. Damage, how much damage the sabotage, the saboteur or the crewmate attempting to fix it could potentially uh, suffer. Timer, this is just if it's going to be a time-based thing, how long till the node just resets itself by itself. Sabotage level, this is used in conjunction with things such as doors or uh, other tasks. Anything actually, well, I shouldn't say anything, but a lot of things that can be configured can have a sabotage level set. And if the sabotage level, as it says here, levels can be one through four, and if your nodes can have levels defined. If the node's level is below the sabotage level, it can be interacted with while the node is sabotaged. So you can have specific doors that can't be opened while the area is sabotaged. So that's kind of neat. Um, or you can make it so you can't complete some tasks while things are sabotaged. And then XP, that's an optional. A lot of them are optional, honestly. Um, that would be if the crew repairs the node, um, how much XP they're awarded. So I'll just go ahead and save that. Um, and then, oh, I actually, I'll get this even if I'm not using the configurator wrench. Interesting, interesting. Okay, well, I'm going to do a little cheat now. I'm going to do TD mode trader. So this just switches me into trader mode. If you have, uh, I think the help's available for everybody. Or if you have the debug screen, it'll tell you, hey, you're a trader right now. So as a trader, when I right click on it, it gives me this little screen here. A lot of this stuff needs uh, QE improvements. There's no risk factor. I can't take any health damage. There is no failure timer. Crew doesn't get any XP. So I can do it. Um, I don't know why I took damage because I shouldn't have. There's a uh, bit of text in the top corner of the screen there on the right to find power switch. Items still require repairs. And I get some text saying that I've success successfully sabotaged the node. So now if I go ahead and do TD mode player, I am now as a player. So if I go over here playing as player, so now I can attempt to fix the node, attempt repairs. I was unsuccessful. Why is this not working? Uh, is it because I set the chance to zero? This is, uh, this ain't, this ain't good, Chief. <laughs> what? No. There's no risk. Why is this not? Okay, well, there's definitely something wrong someplace. Um, I don't know if I can do this. Back to builder. Let me put the chance to one. Save. Now if I do T mode later. So TD is just trader dev. Um, that was actually something that was added by what's his face. And then mode switches your player mode. You can switch between, uh, I believe, any of the available modes just to test nodes out to make sure that they only let you interact when you should be interactable with them. Go back to a player. Risk factor is one of ten. Why is it not letting me repair it? Okay, well, I definitely have something broken here. But uh, this should be able to be repaired. And then once it's repaired, the uh, text in the top right there would go away. And there'd be a chat message saying that the node was repaired. Um, but yeah, somehow, uh, somehow I have a, an error in there. So, but that's a new feature. There's not currently anything in the, uh, the, what do you, what do you call them, these things? The, uh, the school here. Uh, there's currently not anything in here that explains saboteuring at all uh, that'll end up in one of these as of yet unoccupied classrooms so I'll have something in here with the platformer stuff something in there with uh, the vent stuff and something with the sabotage stuff and then we have the stuff with tasks here we got this little uh, arrow which just for pointing out locations so it just says tasks and this one says empty rooms if you want to place it uh, facing the opposite direction, you know, you just place it that way. It's centered to the node. So 
or you could, I suppose, use a screwdriver to do it as well. Um, I wonder if using the screwdriver, one could uh, one could make a point up or down. Would would that be? Well, it's facing the wrong way, but uh, but a yes, it does appear as if that could potentially be a possibility. I would just need to know what I'm doing with a screwdriver to make this thing work the way I want it, you know. Eventually, I feel like this might work. No, it's still facing the wrong Do I need to do it this way? Okay, I need it to be up against the wall. There we go. There we go. So, yeah, you can make it point upwards or point downwards if you want. So, if you have, like, a stairway, you could use it for that, too. And you can put some text on it to explain where things are at. The uh, the entire upstairs here is empty as of yet, too. There's kind of a little cafeteria kind of thing. And there's some more classrooms here, but again, they're, they're empty. It'll be expanded out with stuff in, in the future as things are added that need further explanations. Um, I th think that's it. Oh, no, wait. I just remembered another thing that's been changed. Mailboxes. Um, so yeah, now, if you want, you can put a mailbox in your levels, and uh, you'll get this little text here, you can't check your mail now, if you can't check your mail. I'm not sure why I can't check my mail right now. Oh, because I'm playing as a player, okay. So if I do TD mode ghost I'm a ghost I can check my mail as a ghost TD mode trader can't check my mail as a trader what if I'm playing solo I can check my mail if I'm playing solo and lastly um, lastly as a builder I can check my mail as a builder so mail boxes here are now available to put into any levels and it just checks what what your player playing mode is and if it's something where you shouldn't be allowed to check mail, you can't. Uh, the reason for the whole restrictions on checking mail is because a ghost, assuming they've been killed by the trader, probably knows who the trader is because, well, the trader might have snuck up behind him, so maybe they wouldn't. But they, they have a better chance of knowing who the trader is than anybody else would because the trader killed them. So they could find a mailbox on the level, send a letter to any player that's you know playing the level with them that's not dead and they could check the mail and they go oh hey so and so just told me that the trader whoever they are just killed them and then you could call an emergency meeting oh changes to that too and um yeah it would kind of be unfair so that's the reason why that's like that um this is it was never other than this previously in any update videos, but it did currently, wow, that came out entirely the wrong way. It did used to be this way. Uh, in Sabotage, it used to say who the name of the player was who fixed the Sabotage node. Uh, it no longer does that because that is a dead giveaway as to who the trader is not. Um, the emergency button also used to say who called the emergency meeting, but it wouldn't let the trader call the emergency meeting. Um, that's now been changed. You can still see who called the emergency meeting. It still puts that in the text in the chat message, but it doesn't disallow the trader from doing it. So the trader can call an emergency meeting if uh, if they so chose to. Um, that was also brought to my attention by Dirk, who had mentioned the sabotage thing with saying the player name. It was just little things that I was like, oh yeah, this is nice, and I failed to realize that oh hey, that kind of you know lets you know who can't be the trader because the trader can't do those things. So those have been fixed to uh, allow for that to not be the case anymore. Um, you might be wondering, well, why would you want to know who called an emergency meeting? Why do you even put the name in there? Well, if somebody keeps calling an emergency meeting, it can get kind of annoying. So this way, you know who did it. And if the same person just keeps doing it over and over and over, you, just like, you know what? Stop it. And then you can just vote them off, and then they're no longer playing on the level, and you don't have to worry about them calling emergency meetings anymore. So that's the reason why you have the name available. 
So if somebody's just abusing it and just being annoying, you can just kick them off the level. Be like, you know what? See you later, sucker! And kick them. So that's, uh, that's why that's that way. I believe that is now... Oh, 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 oh! I just remembered one other thing. There is a new light. Um, here we go. It's, uh... It, it's great, it's great. Is there some place that I can go that's dark? Probably not. Let me open this door. Yeah, because it's really dark in here. Uh, let me just no clip through. Let me just no clip through. There we, oh, it's sunlight out, of course. Well, anyway. Yay, you can put little candlesticks out. Yay. Um, I've been... I've been trying to get some some more lights for a while because right now I mean you're pretty limited on light options honestly you only have what 15 options or something I know there's 17 things here but uh, this is a chandelier rod which doesn't actually produce light and then you got a couple pieces for the street light that don't actually produce light but everything's you know fairly modern if you want it to go something antique ish or you know prior to electricity your options were pretty much the torch or you could have used these old lamps because they kind of look like they could be oil lamps but those are kind of your only options i mean i suppose some of these you could be like oh that's a candle inside of there but i wanted some more things that could look more you know like they should be so oh i don't have i was like why am i not following this is kind of weird all right so I think that is now the last of the new updates. I don't believe... I don't really want to go through 50 pages of nodes. But I don't believe I added anything else new. Um, I want to say there were a few small tweaks to some other things that were brought to my attention. A lot of the plants can now be picked. I think that was the case before as well. Um, pretty sure. I, I know, no, no new posters. Yeah, so I think that covers all of the new content and features. We got the vent stuff. The new task that's just the microscope and the apple crate. Oh, I should mention... Um, I think I mentioned this on the Discord as well, but I potentially have viewers watching here who don't follow the Discord, which is perfectly fine. Um, I am actually looking for some, uh, some microscope pictures. So, there's, oh, great. Great, I'm gonna have to restart the server because I broke it. That's well. Um, yeah, it's currently sabotaged, so I can't do this. There's like eight different specimens that it just loops through over and over and over. Uh, it turns out it's really hard, or at least it was difficult for me, to find pictures of things under a microscope that will A, tell you what they are and B are licensed permissively where I can use them. So those eight images are about the, about all I could find that said what they were. And that wasn't like an hour of searching the web. <laughs> so um, the request is if you have a microscope and you wouldn't mind being, being a real dandy person, if you get some pictures of just, you know, some random things under the microscope and send them to me you know, saying what they are and giving them a license that is usable. I could update some of the imagery in here because some of them I don't really like, but I needed more than four. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> that was kind of my options. Uh, anyway, that should now cover all of the new features and updates, I think. If I missed anything, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, I think that's I think that's all the new features and stuff. So thanks for watching. Check out the server if you're interested in playing. Links are down in the description, I believe. Should be. And uh, yeah, that's going to do it for now. Tune back uh, in another couple weeks, and I will see you then.